We have a number of board bills before us this morning. If you are here to speak in favor of any of the uh, pieces of legislation we'll be taking up today, there are sign-in sheets up there. Make sure that you do so. Um, and Madam Clerk, will you please call the roll? Yes, sir. Alderman Moore, Alderwoman Howard, Alderwoman Hubbard, Alderwoman Murphy, Here. Alderwoman Spencer, Here. Alderman Gunther, Here. Alderman Oldenburg, Present. Chairman Cohn, Present. Five present, you have a quorum. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Yes, sir. Okay, so uh, we will take up board bill number 74, Alderman Kennedy. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. It took me off guard. <laughs> I appreciate it. Um, board Bill 74 is a, provides for blighting, 15 years blighting, tax abatement for uh, what's called the Finney Scattered Sites area. This particular project is a part of our, what's called the North Central Plan in the Vandevenor neighborhood. The Vandevenor neighborhood is roughly in between Vandevenor and Taylor, Washington, over to Evans. Uh, that is where we have a new development called North Sarah. This particular portion of the development is just west of where the North Sarah development stops. So North Sarah development goes from Vandevenor up to Whittier, and this portion is there at Whittier there, uh, directly just on the other side of Stevens School. Uh, it allows for 15 years tax abatement for, oh, pardon me, you have, I'll wait a moment. So this outlines the, the basics of the project, including an elevation on the second page, giving you an idea of the types of units that would be built and the number of units that would be built. This area has been depressed for at least 20 years. Uh, it was once a part of what was called the Sarah Finney Merchants area. Uh, it is an area where the old Comet Grill and Comet Theater were and other um, entertainment areas. It has been vacant uh, for many years. Much of it is owned by LRA, the properties. And so the tax abatement would certainly uh, help this development to um, into fruition. Uh, it expands and improves that area. It expands what we've already done just to the east of it as a part of the North Central, North Sarah plan, uh, development. Those are the work to live units that we have there on North Sarah and uh, various uh, apartments. Uh, so this is an extension of that, though this is a different developer than what was in North Sarah. So this is, um, allows for the 15 year tax abatement. That's because of the uh, tax credits that's needed as opposed to what we have begun to do, which is 10. <coughs> there are a number of units. You have 25 three bedrooms, 12 four bedrooms, and there would also be a community house. Uh, after the individuals that come into this, it, the idea is to also empower a new generation of homeowners so they can lease to purchase these properties as they move along. We ask for your favorable support. <laughs> Um, so the, the 15 year abatement is on all 38 parcels then? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, we'll take some questions from the committee. Alderman Moore. No. Uh, Madam Clerk, can you excuse uh, Alderwoman Howard? She's yes. not available. Yes. Um, Alderwoman Hubbard, no. Uh, Alderwoman Murphy? Yes, I just have one question. What is a community, one bedroom community house? We have, I can speak to it, but we also have the uh, developer here. I just don't know what it is, and it is, why is there only one? The, <laughs> well, the community house is an, an area, a common area. Okay, right, but it says one but bedroom. But there will be a bedroom attached to it. There will be a... Oh, I was, I've never heard she of that. She can further explain it. <laughs> is this okay, Mr. Chairman? That you Absolutely. Okay. Good morning, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee. Uh, thanks for the question on the one bedroom community mm -hmm. house. It is a home in which the management office 
will be present. It is also a home that will be used uh, to expand these enriched services on the development, such as the resident block unit association, mm -hmm. the uh, financial education classes uh, from one of our partners, credit unions. It also has a bedroom on the top floor, that was what I was which in essence will also be a uh, rental unit into the end of the compliance period in which the entire house will then be available for the existing residents for purchase. Thank you. Thank you. Is that all? Okay. Uh, Alderwoman Spencer. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, if you don't mind, I was going to ask about the community credit union you mentioned. Um, can you tell us a little bit about that? What an interesting concept. Thank you. So the entire development is falling under a services enriched development, uh, which gained priority from MHDC. So as a part of that, not only are we building homes, we are also establishing enriched services for the residents who live in the development, such as the partnership with Electro Savings and Credit Union, which will assist the residents there with financial education, uh, helping to establish establish uh, savings accounts and helping to further financially uh, stabilize the residents who live in the development. We also have a partnership with uh, Rankin Technical College, which is approximately a block away uh, on the west side of the development in which full scholarships are established for the residents of the development, as well as summer uh, STEM scholarships for their youth. Uh, we also have a MOU with Slate to assist with um, workforce development and uh, increased employment and job opportunities. And uh, the last partnership with the Urban League Federation of Block Units, as you know, the importance of stabilizing uh, various blocks throughout the community in which, uh, just as my past development, Village of Delmore Place, we will establish a block unit neighborhood association that will meet in the neighborhood house to further uh, uh, stabilize and continue to work with the remaining community to uh, help increase the vitality of the area. And I apologize, I didn't catch your name. Thank you, Alderwoman Smith. Yafit El uh, I am the developer of the Finney Place Development uh, Project. And I know we've uh, talked several times about some development in the 20th Ward. I look forward to finding a project that we can work on. Thank you. Um, Commu the, com the credit union, are they going to be involved in helping? I assume that these homes will be for sale. That's correct. So are they going to be involved in helping to finance the homes? So they do um, have a project, and I recently met with uh, Patrick, who was the president of uh, the, uh, excuse me, uh, Stan, Stan, who is the president of uh, Electro Savings and Credit Union, they do have a program in which they could assist with providing the loans. Part of this development at year 13, we will start then to uh, transition the eligible homeowners for uh, home ownership versus based, based upon the various classes that we will start uh, bringing them through from renters to now homeowners. As you know, it's a lot different when someone else is mowing your lawn versus you having to mow your lawn or replace a window or a door. So we will start transitioning them, uh, determining which ones have a desire to purchase the homes. I will also say that a really cool part of our program is that any of the rent that they have paid toward uh, living there will offset the, the equity and the cost of the home. So if you've lived there for eight years and you've paid $40,000 over the eight years, that $40,000 will now be counted toward the equity in the purchase of the home. So we're really excited about being able to offer that and further increase home ownership opportunities uh, once MHDC compliance period ends. That sounds, this is a very innovative way of developing an area. Alderman um, continues to challenge us and, and raise the bar, and, and we try to uh, meet and exceed his expectations. Partnering with a credit union is a phenomenal asset for development, considering we often have a hard time getting banking into, into neighborhoods. Do you, my last question is just related to the new construction um, versus uh, uh, re rehabilitation. How many of the existing sites have existing buildings on them? I see maybe just one. That's one. It. That's one. one. Yep. So 
this is a, a, a block that has been fairly decimated in its housing stock, mm -hmm. and so this is a, an effort to, to rebuild it rather than tearing down and... It's actually infill on three blocks. So that's Finney, CD Banks, uh, and Cook. So we've been able to uh, infill the rest of CD Banks excuse me, a Finney, um, which we are going west of the North Sarah Phase 3 development. So we will actually kiss up against it and, and infill all of the vacant uh, lots right there, taking down um, the one uh, uh, parcel that is now standing and replacing that with new ho homes. As well as on the uh, CD banks, there is nothing there now on the west side of the school. And then uh, we will touch the uh, very eastern parts of Cook and uh, doing some slight infill there on Cook Avenue as well. And so these new construction are built one on each standard single family standard lot size, the 35. Bigger by actually. So you've expanded the lots? A little larger. These are three and four bedroom homes, which are typically a little larger than most MHDC projects in our desire to try to accommodate growing families. So I grew up with four sisters and at one point we shared one room. So just to be able to get a little elbow room for the young people as they grow through the community, we found that to be psychologically uh, more rewarding for the community and uh, beneficial for families. But the lot size, are you re, re um, alloc? Yes, they are being replatted. Some of them are. Some of the lots were not, um, they were very small, so we had to maybe take a lot and a half, you know, or take three lots and put two homes on three lots, if that, if that answers your question. Put three homes, so you're, the homes are going to be closer together than they were historically or further apart? No, so we would take, so say three former lots that had three homes, we would sit like two homes on, on the lots that used to have three. So they'll be slightly larger um, than the home that may have sat there. Some of the lots were actually big enough. So if you ever ride down the street, you will see some homes are two stories that um, also had some width there and then some were smaller. So we've been very careful to ensure that the homes that we are building are following the uh, facade of the community and, and um, has a similar appearance. We also took some of, uh, I guess, the historical context and, you, and homes that you will see with under the roofing with the designs there to try to add a little bling to them, if you will. That's great. I think for, for uh, the reason I'm asking these questions is, again, just to kind of make sure that they match within, as you pointed out, uh, but also to maintain the city's density. I think it's a very important aspect of our city. I appreciate that uh, you're taking that into consideration. Understood. Mr. Chairman, that's all the questions I have. Thank you. Alderman Gunther. Uh, no questions. <clears throat> Alderman Oldenburg. Yeah, just a couple while the developer is at the podium. That's okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, can you tell me a little bit about Finney Place development? Have you guys done other work in this area or around the city and utilized um, affordable housing tax credits before? Thank you very much for the question. Sure. So Finney Place yeah. development is, is actually just established the, the name a, for this SPD development. For this. Yes, my, um, my company, Efficacy Consulting and Development, has uh, completed other affordable housing. I actually am a resident of it? I'm sorry. Efficacy. E-F-F-I-C-A-C-Y. I actually am a resident of the 26th Ward and got an opportunity to uh, complete another 40-unit uh, townhome and garden home development that sits behind the old Connect Care Regional Hospital St. Luke's, which is actually about uh, a block away from where the new uh, loop trolley will be coming uh, on Delmar and De Bolivar. And so in 2015, we completed the uh, 40 townhomes and garden homes in the similar context with the uh, neighborhood community um, house, in essence, where the management is housed there and where we are currently utilizing that development area for <coughs> Uh, block unit and neighborhood association actions in the 26th war with Ottoman Williamson. Great. Um, and then secondly, do you have, have you been allotted the 9% affordable housing credits and has your MHDC construction loan been finalized 
happen Thank and when you. do you think construction will commence? Very, very good questions. I appreciate that. Um, the uh, Village of Del Mar Place was actually a 4% bond. bond credit. Um, it was heavily supported by the City of St. Louis um, Affordable Housing Commission and uh, the city had helped uh, that project to the tune of about $2 million, uh, which afforded us the ability to do new construction with the 4% bonds. The uh, Finney Place is a 9% uh, tax credit development. I am also a part of another development in St. Louis County, along with Believer's Temple, which is a Scott Manor, which is a 42-unit senior uh, development as well. Nice. They both are 9% uh, tax credit developments. Currently, we are in... Um, the, we've just completed bid phase, so we are now reviewing bids um, and hoping to have a firm submission by the end of this month, if not the beginning of July, uh, with maybe being able to turn over that first uh, shovel of dirt, uh, August or September. Wonderful. Okay. Looks like a great project. Congratulations on everything you. so far. We're excited about bringing it to the community. Any other questions? Is there a motion that we uh, may, may I add something? Oh, just, absolutely. Just, just very quickly. Um, back in 1999, it was clear that we needed to do a planning for our community. And so we joined in with the 19th Ward and created what was called the North Central Plan. What was significantly different with it is that it just did not include infrastructure development or streets, but it also included the types of services that the community wanted to see. We took two years of visioning work and had very extensive meetings. Uh, 75, 150 people will show up to these meetings to create this plan. Many of those elders have passed on, but their vision is what we're trying to implement. And that's why you're seeing the types of services that they are bringing. When she said that the alderman is pushing the bar, what it really is is that our plan calls for specific types of services, and we also put into that plan the approach, the, the manner in which we wanted to see this. We wanted to have significant numbers of African American participation in businesses. Uh, as well as workforce in that area. We wanted to see the people who were building there also looking like the people from that community, but still further creating a new generation of black home builders, commercial builders, as well as construction uh, workers. And so uh, it was with this particular company and, and their vision, they were able to very, very come in to match what we were doing. And that's why we have this, what we consider an innovative approach is actually the, the thought of it and the spirit of it is in our North Central plan. Wonderful. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, if I may, um, the plan, th this being directed by the plan, this is a good opportunity to remind ourselves just how important planning is and the lack of planning in so many of our neighborhoods, what a detriment that is to us. And if we had some sort of planning like that in our neighborhoods, what we could do with that. Mm -hmm. And so appreciate that effort, especially knowing the history of there um, and the importance and the recognition of the importance of planning in our communities. And we had no idea where the money will come from. Right. But that community said we at least needed to put into writing our vision for the community so that the next generations would know that we had, that those elders had a thought about how life should be in our community. I'm sorry. And Mr. Chairman, if I can also add that, um, and you all may have read this recently, that Rankin on right directly on the other side of us is now doing the manufacturing incubator that will be directly to the uh, west of the development. And its president, Stan Sean, indicated, because they also are doing some uh, uh, housing development, that it is his desire to infill the rest of their land with similar homes. He said, yeah, if it, don't be surprised if ours look just like yours. I said, well, that's really what we're trying to do. But to now spur other uh, uh, stakeholders in the community to also come in and, and develop in and continue the uh, rebirth of the community again. So that's a good plus that's happening. And we had, to, we had to have a very, I know it looked like a tag team right here, but we had to have a very <laughs> frank conversation with Rankin because they has, has historically not allowed African American or women as students in Rankin. And so we got together as a community and met with them. And their new president at that time was very amenable to um, extending their hand to the community. What they used to do is to build mock houses on their lot on the campus and then tear them down. We said, if you can do that there, you can do that in the community. You won't have to tear them down. And so then we began that project with them of building homes in the community and, putting, and make them for sale in cooperation with a community council that we created with Rankin. So that's 
how we've tried to, how that community has tried to marry services with the production of housing and commercial development. And this furthers our effort in that neighborhood. And so we ask for your favorable support. Thank you for listening and we ask for Absolutely. your favorable support. I, I will entertain a motion to do pass board bill uh, 74 out of committee. Uh, Is there a second? Second. Madam Clerk, will you call the roll? Alderman Moore, Alderwoman Howard, Alderwoman Hubbard, Alderwoman Murphy. Aye. Alder, Alderwoman Spencer. Aye. Alderman Gunther. Aye. Alderman Oldenburg. Aye. Chairman Cohn. Aye. Five I votes to pass. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I, <coughs> next, we will hear board bill number 75 from Alderman, oh. Alderman Rody, actually, I didn't. <laughs> Alderman Vicaro, if you may hold, we're, we have a board bill that we have held in the last committee, and if you want to take up board bill number 71, or 21, sorry. Um, yeah, Mr. Chairman, uh, this was the board bill that we held in last uh, at the last committee. It was for a uh, commercial property on Shoto that had been vacant for a number of years it's kind of an historic structure it is an historic structure it was the pumping station for the gas tanks that used to be located there and I think a question arose last time regarding uh, the um, regarding the uh, assessed value of this and I believe that that question was answered and emailed out to everyone that the uh, appropriate assessed rate would be uh, return to commercial, I believe, is what the issue was. So, um, I guess. Uh, yeah, and actually, I invited the assessor's office here just to confirm uh, that, like, just that process as well for the committee in case they had any sure. questions about it. Mm -hmm. um, if you wouldn't mind coming up. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Thank you, Alderman Rudy. Good morning, Mr. Chairman and committee members. Uh, my name is Sean Ordway. I'm the deputy assessor for the city of St. Louis. And I'm um, here on behalf of Mr. Dunlap, who had a scheduling conflict and could not attend. So um, I have with me David Donald, who is our abatement analyst and specialist. So uh, as part of your request, you would request that maybe somebody from the assessor's office attend these meetings on a regular basis. And so David would actually be the person that, that would be doing that. Uh, uh, to answer any questions that might come up at any time regarding the assessor's process. So what we know about 4427 Shoto is that um, apparently there's been an error. Uh, there was a building permit back in 2012 and, and for whatever reason, uh, someone in our office went ahead and changed the classification uh, before they actually had a, uh, before the building actually anything that actually occurred. So that is not our process or procedure. Um, in fact, our process and procedure is still going on with this property, which is we go out and check it every year when we have a building permit because we're waiting for the new, the new construction to occur and then we have to determine whether or not we're going to change the assessed value and or the classification of, of that situation. Um, so uh, the person who made the change has retired one of our most experienced and knowledgeable appraisers so it's a it's a little concerning that they would have just taken a building permit and changed it so at this point I don't know if it was a data entry error or if it was meant to be done on purpose uh, we have checked it every year after that for that and the person who is now in that position has been in that position less than a year and just went out and looked at it and didn't even realize that um, that it was out on his residential and just was checking to see if any new construction had still occurred so at this point, um, we will be able to make the change and change it back to commercial as it, it, it obviously is not residential in use at the time being. And according uh, to the law of the way that we have to assess property, it should have been commercial property all along. However, we cannot retroactively go back. We can only change it in a year of reassessment and go forward. So um, my question in terms of uh, this board bill specifically, that reassessment to change it from residential to commercial will happen regardless of the abatement that we will pass. That is correct, but it could have an impact on abatement. So if it's a chapter 99 abatement, then we would give the most recent 
assessed value of the property. And, and what you have to be aware of is assessed value has two components. One is the market value of the property, and two is the classification. Those two items together actually create an assessed value. So for an example, a $100,000 property, if it's assessed as residential, it's a $19,000 assessed value because it's at 19%. That same $100,000 property has an assessment rate of 32% if it's commercial, so it's a $32,000 assessed value. So assessed value always has those two components, which is the market value and the classification. That's why the classification is so important. So if this were, chap were to be a Chapter 99 abatement, then it would, it would be... Uh, the pre-developed value would be commercial. Um, if this were to be a Chapter 353 and the pass-through were to occur in 2017, then we are obligated by law to use the assessment from the year prior to the year that it passed through, so the assessed value from 2016, which would be residential. So depending on the, assess the abatement program you're in, in this particular situation, because of the error that occurred, it, it could have an effect on the pre-developed value. So, Dale, this is not in the Chapter 353 area that's Cortex. It's a, so it's a, therefore, it's a 99. It's a 99, then it would. Yeah, and 99 is referenced throughout the legislation, so. Okay, so as a Chapter 99, it'll be assessed. Well, it, it will be commercial. assessed as commercial. Great. Uh, by the time we get the completion cer certificate, it, it would come through, it would be commercial property, and it would, the, the pre-developed value would be commercial. Okay, wonderful. Thank you. <coughs> I appreciate you all coming down. Um, if you could, and just in case there's questions sure, from the committee, I, we'll start with uh, Alderwoman Murphy. No questions. Alderwoman Spencer. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have to commend you for asking the assessor's office to come down. This is going to be a great partnership, I think, in understanding how these things are done. Um, we have before us two estimated fiscal impacts. Am I correct here? And we have the four. Well, my first question would be, what is the difference in tax liability on this property, residential versus commercial? Do we... We didn't actually figure out the tax liability. I mean, the assessor's office does value, so we actually don't do taxes. Taxes would only be available once the tax rate is set and the assessed value is applied to the tax rate. Right. So, so I, I guess we just didn't come prepared for that, um, so we don't actually have a... I got, but I think you did just answer that roughly. I mean, it's an estimated... So the diff what's like oh, the it's 19, difference? So it's 19% of market value if it's residential. It's the it's thirty two percent of market value if it's commercial, but commercial also has a dollar and sixty four surtax added to it. So and the dollar sixty four is assessed in what in what way? It, it's on all commercial real estate. But but is it a do, just a one dollar sixty four added to the the base tax rate? So the base tax rate is eight eight point three eight one eight for for last year, but then you would add a dollar sixty four to that for all commercial property. So it's adding an additional 15% or is yes. it a dollar? Okay, something around that. I mean, it's always a dollar 64, no, no but matter what it's, the base But it's a dollar 64 in, a, in a, an assessment tool. It's not just, you, here's your tax bill plus $1.64. No, it's, it's $1.64 okay. add to the tax rate. Sure. Okay, so it's an additional. So this is a significant increase, almost 2.5 times what the original tax like. So this will definitely have an impact on the on the fiscal impact of the tax abatement because the starting tax rate is significantly higher. So what we're looking at here as far as the estimated fiscal impact, we have two papers before us. One shows a total value of tax abatement for the 4427 Shoto and one we're looking at Station G I apologize, Mr. Chairman, if we went through this last meeting and I have since failed to retain the information as far as why we have two. Do I, these were just handed out this morning. I, I would 
presume that someone from SLDC would be able to explain that. Okay, but these are based on the assessment from the residential assessment rather than what we've what we're in the process of correcting <coughs> in the assessor's office. I would imagine so. At least one of them would have been. Zach, do you? Or Sergeant, did you guys hand these out to us, by the way? Did Terrence put these on our He did. <coughs> so then, I think I'm done with questions for Mr. Ordway, and thank you for being here. And well, I. And, but we have other members of the committee as well. Yeah, so, so if uh, Alderman Gunther or Alderman Oldenburg, do you have questions from the assessor's office? Okay. Thanks all right. for coming. Thank, Thank you, you very much. much. That's all. That's all well, I was actually going to. Perhaps Mr. Jack Wilson, Wilson with SLDC. Uh, you should be looking at the 139. That's from John Ferry. We don't have a 139. We have a 634 and a 124. It was a. It's in the staple packet that was handed out today to you. <laughs> should be attached. <clears throat> yes, those are that. Oh, there's a third one. There's the there you go. These were emailed to the committee members yesterday, by the way. So I, did, I did look, I did appreciate you, that, Zach. If, if Thank you, you very much. Um, if you went through your emails yesterday, you should have seen did. this. So, um, Zach, I'm just not, why do we have these two that were handed out to us? John, um, that was from last, last meeting, correct? I, you mean? Yes. Uh, John uh, does a different type of analysis than we do internally. John Ferry, any project over a million dollars, John does an analysis on. Takes in a, quite a, more bit of variables. Uh, we do just amount of investment into the property. So. The two that were handed out by Terrence are the ones that John provided. And one is the impact for the institutions that receive right. taxes and one is the value of the tax abatement for the yeah, yeah Dale Ruth sense the the difference is that when John Ferry looks at it he adds in earnings tax or sales tax in a commercial project such as this other things combines them all together <clears throat> where historically we've just looked at the the real estate tax part so in the future I think we'll combine all this together and you'll just be getting one <clears throat> And I believe we actually have a representative from Greater Goods. Uh, Patrick, I'm not sure if you want to speak about the project at all. Hi, I'm Patrick. Uh, I'm with uh, Greater Goods. I'm not really here to speak too much. If you guys have questions about the project, that's kind of more what I'm here to talk about. Um, but as you know, Station G is an old Lee gas building. Um, we're going to be using it for our headquarters. And uh, until we fill it out, we'll probably lease it out to other commercial companies. Does Question? anyone have any questions? Chairman Governor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, so on the sheet that we have, it says 2240 full-time jobs. How many current jobs are there? How many um, jobs do you move in So at? we just last year moved into uh, a little shop on Vanaventer. So we're in the city now. We moved there and we had um, 12. We currently have 16. We're about to fill out all our spots, so by the time we move in, it could be 40, it could be 80. Um, we're hoping it'll be around 40, 45, um, and depending on the rate of our growth, which we're tripling in size every year right now, um, we're not 100% sure what that number will be in a year and a half when we actually move in. So depending on how right, the Right now works. you have 16, though? Uh, we have 16. At, you know, on Van Venter, and then we have probably three or four downtown on the north side where our uh, warehouse is. Thank you. Will you be moving the warehouse facility into <coughs> Station we're, G? We're well? currently shopping for a warehouse also okay. in the city. So. What size? Um, <laughs> at this point, um, probably as big as we can find, but we'll, we can talk about that later. <laughs> 44 to 4,600 Gustine, that's right up your alley. No. Um, <laughs> any other questions? No question. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Can you describe what Greater Goods is? Sure. I do, I, I think. 
<laughs> so Greater Goods <laughs> is the last I think we did, and I failed to retain that. Yeah, Greater Goods is our parent brand. Um, we make brands. So like one of our brands is Balance, one's Weight Grooves, um, one's Rise, Nourish, um, and then we partner every brand that we make with a charity. So for example, Balance and Weight Gurus are partnered with Love 146, which is um, targeting human trafficking. Mm -hmm. So every one of our brands that succeeds, we funnel what's called sustainable revenue to a charity that's doing work that we deem to be awesome. So we work with Love 146, um, the Global Orphan Project, which um, their headquarters is in Kansas City. Mm -hmm. um, and then we also work with Pure Earth um, but Love 146 is in Connecticut, but they do a lot of their works in the Philippines and in the United States. Sounds like a really wonderful business to be in. Um, and can you introduce yourself? I know your name is Patrick. Yeah, I'm Patrick Combe. I'm in the 15th Ward. Um, and I've been here for the chicken bills. <laughs> so well, we I hope you come here. back on Thursday because we're going to be hearing more chicken bills. Oh, I've, I've heard of it. <laughs> Thank you for the advertisement, Alder. <laughs> Thank you, Patrick. Well, thanks, guys. Appreciate your time. Uh, and with that, I'll entertain a motion on Board Bill 21. Hmm? I move that we pass Board Bill 21 out of committee with a due pass recommendation. Is there a second? Second. Uh, Madam Clerk, will you call the roll? Alderman Moore, Alderwoman Howard, Alderwoman Hubbard, Alderwoman Murphy. Aye. Alderwoman Spencer. Aye. Alderman Gunther. <laughs> No. Alderman Oldenburg. Aye. Chairman Cohn. Aye. Four aye votes, one no vote. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Uh, and with that, we'll take up board bill number 75. Alderman Vaccaro, thank you for your patience. Uh, here's a... Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So, <clears throat> Board Bill 75, and, and I'm real new at this because we don't generally do these, and uh, the question could be why. So this is a company that is located <coughs> across from Ted Drew's that they're losing their lease on their property, and uh, Zach will verify they were looking at places in the county. In a conversation with Greg Daly, I was telling Greg, I got this abandoned building why don't they look at it so after talking to them I convinced them they're gonna spend four hundred thousand dollars on this building which they'll be paying tax on which is about twelve thousand a year uh, and I agreed we would try to do this they actually wanted 15 um, and we went back and forth and said well 10 then I at least try to get them a 10-year tax abatement and again it's something I don't normally do but it's in this case it's a building that is a blight. It sits there, you know, along with this, we're gonna do new sidewalks. There's a used car lot next to it. So the plan for that is we're gonna do sidewalk all along there through the used car lot, all the way down, not all the way down Arsenal, but from Arsenal over. It borders uh, the uh, 24th Ward. And, you know, I just, it, it saves, eight, well, it keeps eight, jobs that pay between fifty and two hundred thousand dollars in the city on here I know it says that uh, I think he said he would add an additional seven more employees uh, in talking to him I'm hoping they do a lot more than that they do a lot of warehousing they sell to zero freeze and they have other product lines but they sell to like Walmart and uh, chain so when you go in and buy that water drinking stuff um, other than that, you know, I'm willing to answer any questions. Like I said, it's very rare, in fact, so rare that this is the first time. Uh, but I do believe that this one, keeping the jobs in the city, fixing a building that will continue just to be a blight, uh, you know. Yeah, I don't have a bunch where a lot of neighborhoods do, but, you know, we also know that if we just let one go and then another one, we can get there. Anyway, I, I would ask, you know, that you would... Uh, vote in favor of this, and I'll answer any questions. I also brought Zach along, who can help me through this. Uh, Alderwoman Murphy? Uh, yes. Uh, so the building is currently vacant? 
Yes. And it's been vacant for how long? Do we, do we know? Mm, you know, I don't know, but it yeah. seems like quite a while. I think, I do think Merlot Plumbing may have still kept mm -hmm. owning it, but I don't know that. Uh, there's been no activity at that building in a long time. Uh, has it been paying to property tax? Yeah, I, I would it think is. it's been paying the taxes and, on it. Uh, Okay, that's, that's, and do we know what that is, the current property? $12,000 a year, yeah, and that's what they'll be paying still. Is for, right, for the next 10 years, yes. Yeah. Okay. We'll yeah, I, I'm trying to picture the building. I know it's been vacant and, for quite a while. Yeah, and, and, and like I said, it sits next to that car lot, so it's been hard to do anything with. Mm -hmm. And yeah, this I, was I after sitting is, down, yeah. uh, like I said, in a conversation with Greg Daly, and Greg goes, well, I got a friend of mine that's looking in the county, and I said, well, shoot. Let me talk to him before he gets away that I have a building that he could own. You don't have to worry about being taken out of a lease. And uh, so, I mean, that, that's the situation that we have there. And I really believe we're, you know, beside, I think the uh, savings for him over the year, the tax payment over the year is what, 60 mm -hmm. some odd thousand dollars. Yeah, 60. Right. But just even sidewalk work to improve that, he's putting 200,000 in, right. and I'm putting an additional 47,000 in to do sidewalk, not only all along Watson there, but down Arsenal somewhat, to clean that corner up. Mm -hmm. uh, and if anybody's been by there, you'll see where the whole curbing and the sidewalk is powder. So, you know, it, it's just an, an incentive even for me to spend a lot of money to, to make sure that we're fixing up that, to make that look right. What he's doing with the building is gonna do nothing but improve that corner. Other than that, that's not a bad corner. It's across from La Russo's. It's Caddy Corner from Brazzi's, uh, mm -hmm. you know, uh, we've repaved the road, you know, I got, I got together with Scott and we've repaved Arsenal and uh, it just fits in with the, a plan. And again, I don't have a lot of this. In fact, this is the first time I'm asking for anything like this, but it's one building and, you know, if we ignore that one and we can have a second and a third, so. Uh, and I'm open to questions. Still. Alderman or Alderwoman Spencer. I have no questions at this time. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Alderman Gunther. No questions. Alderman Oldenburg. Yes, thank you. Um, where were they? Where are they currently located? Across from well, Eagle Bank. Mm -hmm. Right there at Eagle Bank. In Eagle and, Bank. No, you know, and I could ask Zach. He'd know exactly. I just know that they were leaving the neighborhood, and it was brought to my attention. Technically, it's in, in your ward yeah. that they're leaving from, and then they're coming to a better ward. Oh, I mean, no. <laughs> Are we voting yay or nay yet? <laughs> no. Uh, do you happen to know, I, I am familiar with this corner, obviously, it's on, I'm on my way home to and from uh, mm -hmm. every day. Um, who owns this building currently, and, and why do you think that they weren't able to just to, to get tenants or get, get a lease on, on, the, on the building? On the on this building? Yeah, on the, on the 31. I, I believe it's Merlot Plumbing, and I don't know because I didn't really. It was a fluke it's that, business. you know, when I was talking to Greg, he said that these guys were leaving, and I'm like, well, I got a building. So I, I don't know mm -hmm. because I was more or less out of the loop, and I, I just know when I go by, if you look at that, it's just not the best. Right. And Do you know the um, area and median income for this area by chance? Well, I'm pretty sure it's, you know, we're not low mod. Yeah. We may border it, but we're not low mod. Yeah. So. I have no further questions. Okay, Thanks, thank you. Um, do you know, Alderman, has uh, Sub-Zero Gear or Ken, do, have they actually put a contract on the property or do they own the property currently? I think they bought it. They did. I think they did okay. with my word that we're going to fix the sidewalks and I'll do my best to get this through. Great. And then Alderwoman Spencer. Just along with Ms. Alderman Oldenburg's question, is there, normally we have the MVNA listed. What is the MVNA on, on this area? We, we usually only include MVA on residential projects. Yeah. Commercial. Usually don't? We usually only do it on, oh, only on, on, on residential. residential. I don't think I've noticed that. Is there a reason why we would? Only target to residential data. We can start including on commercial properties, but it doesn't really have the same data. <clears throat> it just, it, 
to me speaks to the area. Okay. It provides some level of data about uh, the stability of the community. Most of our neighborhoods are primarily housing, so even though. If you look at the MVA map, it only includes residential properties. It doesn't, it, it's, it's like a, a, a gray tone over commercial properties. Now what we could do if it's helpful is say, is figure out, well, what's the closest residential and where does that stand? But, but this wouldn't actually have a value because it's a commercial piece of property. But we could obviously tell you what, what's nearby. I think that would be helpful if we okay. just know the kind of the context of the neighborhood in which the commercial property is, you know, in terms of where they're located and what it's nice like. That would be helpful. Thank you. Um, <coughs> great. Uh, so if there's no more questions, then I'll entertain a motion on Board Bill 75. So moved. Is there a second? Uh -huh. second. Okay. Madam Clerk, will you please call the roll? Alderman Moore, Alderwoman Howard, Alderwoman Hubbard, Alderwoman Murphy. Aye. Alderwoman Spencer. Aye. Alderman Gunther. No. Alderman Oldenburg. Aye. Chairman Cohn. Aye. Four I vote. One no vote. And thank you for your Thank you, Alderman. Good luck. Uh, and Alderwoman Davis is here, so we'll take up board bill number forty nine. Am I missing Alderman Muhammad? You I are. I know, right? Oh, okay. he now said that this is more. No, I'm just saying that here. Okay. But I, yeah. I haven't okay. Seen if you don't mind, that would be great. Sorry, Alderwoman. It's okay. Here you go. Good morning. Board Bill 49 is <clears throat> a property at 3904 Folsom Avenue. That's the Botanical Heights neighborhood. And as you know, we've had an extensive amount of new home building as well as restoration. Uh, right there at 39th Street, which is a dividing line between Tiffany and Botanical Heights neighborhood, you will find uh, a mixture of housing, whether it is rental, new home ownership, uh, multifamily complexes, as well as single homes. Uh, this particular home uh, has a, is new construction of one home, and you see the cost there for acquisition, the construction cost, and the sale price. The uh, length of tax abatement is in line with the tax abatement that was supported for that neighborhood when we started the projects there about, uh, I guess it's about six years now maybe seven. So one of the things that we wanted to do is to keep in line with that and try to continue to attract more new homeowners. We still have a few vacant lots there and uh, UIC has done an excellent job and they're here to speak if necessary. Any questions? Alderwoman Murphy. Uh, so I'm just, uh, this is the we're doing one house, and, and this is the house, the side view? That's the house? You, you're seeing the, the street. The house is on the corner. Uh, and you also see, also see the vacant lot there. Right. And across the street, we have some storefronts that have been renovated. Uh, at 39th and Lafayette, we had two developments done. Uh, both of those are uh, Lomont rental and... Uh, and you have the new homes there that are being built. Uh, so you have a good mixture there. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Alderman, or Alderwoman Spencer. Alderman Gunther. Um, so I'm very familiar with the area as well. Um, and you said that you started redeveloping that area seven years ago or so. I believe it was um, seven. So just my question is if um, uh, you believe that in those seven years that have gone by, if the market has improved maybe where it would be worthwhile to start changing uh, times of tax abatements, um, is it, I mean, seven years ago we were in kind of like the thick of the Great Depression um, where maybe those incentives were needed to be 10 years, but now we're in the hottest, you know, housing market we've seen in a long time. Um, so do you think 10 years is still 
uh, required? What I can explain to you is that we got stalled in the process, so we still have a lot of vacant lots there. And the people who purchased their homes are hoping to see more homes built there. Uh, and so I would like to continue that process and finish off that development. Probably another year will be done and uh, we can move on to another area and uh, provide some incentives or not. Uh, okay. And then um, the market value analysis on this one, it says that it's in uh, category B, which is the second best market that we have in the city. Mm -hmm. um, so although there are vacant lots, do you not feel that, uh, that the demand would be there because of the, the market value existing and because of how, how nice Botanical Heights looks now? Well, it does look nice, but one of the things you have to understand in real estate is in order to have a market that is driven and continue to drive, you have to have those incentives there, most especially when you have as much that still needs to be done in that particular area. Uh, I still have a lot of uh, multi-units that need to be rehabbed. I'm hoping to encourage some uh, more investment there. Uh, UIC has their eye on some of them, but there's still a lot that needs to be done. So I share Botanical Heights with Joe Rohde, and we still have a lot of work to do. Okay. That's all. Alderman Goldenberg. No questions. All right, thank you. Uh, we also have uh, Brett. Brent Crentenden here yes. from UIC. I, I'm mm -hmm. not sure he signed in. So I'm not sure if Brent, you want to speak to the project or not. I'm happy to answer any specific questions. Are there any questions from the committee of the developer? Okay, saying none. I will entertain a motion on Board Bill 49. So moved. Sir, uh, Madam Clerk, will you please call the roll? Alderman Moore, Alderwoman Howard, Alderwoman Hubbard, Alderwoman Murphy, Aye. Alderwoman Spencer, Aye. Alderman Gunther, no. Alderman Oldenburg, Aye. Chairman Cohn, Aye. four aye votes, one no vote. Thank you very much. And we. Oh, great. Okay. Alderwoman Spencer will be taking up Board Bill 64 on behalf of Alderman Muhammad. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, before us, we have Board Bill 64. I have, uh, this is a 10-year um, tax abatement on Shreve Avenue. This is a home that's um, owned by Northside Community Housing Association, and it's a newly renovated home. Uh, Shreve is a major street in this neighborhood here. Um, this house has been vacant for about 20 years almost, um, since the late 2000s, so I guess a little over 10 years. And um, the resale price is hoping to be, according to the alderman, closer to 100,095. Although this, we do have it listed here at 75. Uh, I think uh, somewhere in there is kind of the sales price hope. This is a um, CDA project, and tax abatement is helping to fill in the gap. Zach, do you want to? All the tax. Where? Pretty much covered it, uh, 1,700 square feet, three bedroom, two and a half baths. It's a CDA funded project, so that's why the construction cost is quite a bit higher than the sales price. So uh, the, the actual, that's the low end for the sales price on the application, 75,000, they could get actually more, but uh, at this, we're basically looking for low to moderate income homeowners more so than anything else, that's the goal. And it's MVAF. Thank you. I have to say, this is a beautiful Gorgeous looking home. home. I, Absolutely I stunning. It's one of my favorite neighborhoods in the city, aside from my own, obviously. Mm -hmm. Are there any questions from members of the committee? Hearing none, uh, I'll entertain a motion on Board Bill 64. So moved. Do pass and recommendation. Is there 
a request for previous role or Alderman Gunther, are you going to switch your vote? Hmm? I'm switching my vote on this one. Okay, <laughs> all right, so Madam Clerk, will you please call the roll? Alderman Moore, Alderwoman Howard, Alderwoman Hubbard, Alderwoman Murphy. Aye. Alderwoman Spencer. Aye. Alderman Gunther. Aye. Alderman Oldenburg. Aye. Chairman Cohn. Aye. Five aye votes. Okay, thank you. Um, hey, Dale. Dale, do you mind do you mind coming up to the podium for a minute? Um, so we are actually getting fairly close to summer adjournment. You're right. Um, and so I just wanted to get word from you in terms of how many more of these are in the pipeline and oh, um, this this I'm clears us out. Now LCRA does meet later today, and they will have some, <clears throat> but we're too late to get them through before summer. So Some of those might get introduced before the summer break, but there isn't time for advertising. And also the next time I'll have things for this committee will be in the fall. Uh, Alderman Vollmer did mention that he had a board bill for tax abatement that he might be bringing to the committee, but I think that there is an issue with the LCRA commission. Are yeah, and, and there, I mean, the problem is that it, um, it's just a, a, the length of tax abatement is what the question is. Right. But if we meet on it today, regardless of what the outcome is, I couldn't get a notice in the newspaper until like a week from Saturday. Okay. And, and by then, I have to advertise twice, and then 10 days later for this committee to meet, we're out of time. Okay. So even though, you know, e even with his project, there wouldn't be any way of getting it on unless you all decide you're going to meet longer than uh, two weeks after the 4th of July. But I think that is, isn't the last day the, the, the second Friday after the 4th of July? Yeah. Right. So there just wouldn't be any way we could get it through this committee and get it through the Board of Aldermen, you know. So, uh, I mean, in, unless someone can, you know, has, has a different schedule, I, I don't see that this committee would well, have the, any... The committee any could still meet. Pardon? Yeah, during this the committee can still meet during summer adjournment. You know, it's just the full board of aldermen wouldn't be meeting. Well, you're right. I mean, we traditionally have never done that, but if you all want to get together, I mean, we can certainly do that. But of course, it would also... Re would you? Okay. Are there... It wouldn't be second right until fall, but... Yeah. Um, it would also then require that some bills get introduced, you know, sometime before the summer break, mm -hmm. which... We will have, I don't know, maybe eight or ten projects, and I don't remember how many of those would come to this committee. Uh, but, uh, I mean, that certainly is an option. Okay. Well, we can discuss that offline. Sure, then. yeah. So I, 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 I just, don't remember ever I, doing it before, but if I, you all well, want to work, we're, we're yeah, open for business. I'm, I'm not opposed to having a meeting of the committee in July. Yeah, okay. Um, well, I mean, obviously, we're here all summer, yeah, so. Yeah, I think that, you know, especially you know, with the work Alderman Rohde and the HUDS committee have been doing on tax incentive, we'll probably have a meeting in July just to talk about, you know, tax abatement reform as well. Sure. So we might as well take up, you know, some board bills while we're, you know, having that discussion. Okay. No, that's fine. That's fine. Um, you know, Alderwoman Murphy, are, are you okay with that? Hmm? Having a meeting or two over the summer? Hmm? Uh, well, what, what good would it do? Yeah, so, I mean, there's there's at least one that I'm aware of, because uh, Alderman Vollmer, so, okay. All right, wonderful. All right, thank you. Okay. So, Dale, yeah, I mean. Okay, well, we then we'll work it, uh, to see if we can get some bills introduced between now and uh, whatever that date is, the 12th of, of July, and any of those bills that get introduced, sure, we could bring them to committee over the summer. Okay, great. And then okay. there'll be second red when we come back in the fall. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Okay. Good. Sounds good. Thank you all. Uh, with that, I call the meeting adjourned. Thanks for your time, everyone. Thank you.